Yes, guys, let's continue with question number nine. Question number 10. ABC holds 40% of voting power of XYZ. The remaining voting powers are held by six other shareholders, each individually holding 10%. Whether the investor holding 40% has a right to power, uh, has a uh, voting power, has a power over the investee, you can't say that. Because it is very less likely for me to say that ABC has a power unless and until the balanced shareholders are also agreeing with him. So therefore, you cannot say just by the shareholding here because 10% each person holding itself is also substantive. So it is not possible to determine whether ABC has a power over the investee or not. Look at the answer. In this case, it is likely that ABC has power since the size of the number of shareholders required to outcast ABC is not so high. The additional facts and circumstances should be considered to determine whether ABC has power or not. So you cannot really establish guys only with the given example. An investor holds 35% of voting rights. Three other shareholders hold 5% of voting rights in the investing. The remaining voting rights are held by numerous other shareholders, none of them individually holding even 1%. None of the shareholders have made an arrangement to consult any others or make collective decisions. The decision about the relevant activities of the investee require the approval of majority of the votes. That is 75% of the rights of the investee would be cast at recent relevant shareholder meeting. 75% okay, is generally being cast. 35% is only held by the investor, guys, which is less than 50%. Whether the investor's voting rights are sufficient to have a power to direct the activities. Guys, again, in conclusive, because we don't know, but the understandably, the remaining shareholders, only three shareholders have 55% each. The remaining shareholding is less than 1%. Therefore, you can conclude that a, the investor has a power over the investee because of the virtue of a higher shareholding of 35% that he has. In this case, the active participation in the recent shareholders meeting indicates that investor does not have a practical ability to direct the relevant activities uh, unilaterally, regardless of whether the investor can direct the related activities because of a sufficient number of other shareholders voted in the same manner as the investor. Investor A and two other investors hold two-thirds of the right, voting rights in investee. The investee's business activity is closely related to investor A. In addition to equity uh, instruments, investor A also holds debt instruments which are convertible into ordinary shares at any point of time at a fixed price. The conversion right is substantive and the debt when converted, A Limited will have 60% of voting rights in the investee. A Limited would benefit from realizing synergies if the debt instrument is converted, whether A Limited has a power over the investee, 100% yes. Because if there is a the right to convert the debt instrument is substantive and after that substitution of debt into equity, they will control 60%. Therefore, including the current holding plus the potential holding, investor A has a power over the investee. Guys, all these problems we'll see later on. One comprehensive problem which I wanted to solve. Let's talk about that. Let's look at this question number 19. DEF acquired 100% ordinary shares of 100 rupees each in XYZ on 1st October. On 31st March, toward, that is after 6 months, summarized balance sheet of two companies is as under. Some balance sheets have been given for both the companies. Look at investments in XYZ held by DEF Limited, which is acquired at 34 lakhs. Okay. As I move further, I find that there is a share capital and other reserves. The retained earnings of XYZ showed a credit balance of 3 lakhs on 1st April, out of which 10% dividend has been paid out on 1st November. When did the acquisition happen? In October. So that means this dividend which was received must have been uh, received even by the holding company and they must have credited it to the PN. DEF has credited the dividend received to its retained earnings. Fair value of plant and machinery on 1st October is 20 lakhs. The rate of depreciation on machinery is 10%. Following the changes in the fair value as, as per the respective in days from book value as on 1st October, 
which are considered by consolidation of the balance sheets. So the trade payables, these are changes in fair value. Trade payables increased by 1 lakh. Land and building increased by 10 lakhs. And inventories have increased by 1 lakh 50. Prepare consolidation as on balance sheet date. Read through the question. Read through the question first. You have material in your hand. Please read through the question. First, think about what could be the steps involved in consolidation. You remember the eight steps in consolidation, right? We will do those eight steps. If you have read through those quest that question completely, then I will start solving. There is revaluation in this, there is dividend in this, acquisition is exactly in the between of the year. So there is some kind of approach that we need to follow. So let's start. So yes guys, let's start solving this question. First, step one, date of acquisition. What is your date of acquisition? You want me to number it? I'll number it. My date of acquisition already given in the question. What is the date? Date given to me is 1st October 2011. 110. Second, how do I write my share holding pattern? Dividing into number of shares and percentage holding. Number of shares. The whole company is DEF limited. The balance What is the number of shares? Just check. Go back to your question and think. Just a second guys, there's a power outage.
sorry guys there was a power outage guys guys my camera will not be visible so please kindly follow what i'm saying okay 